It don't matter what I try I just can't win and I don't know why There's a fork in every road I pick the wrong one and then I go American loser, yes I am Disenfranchised from everything well, I fall up and I fall down An American loser the day I was born Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of American Loser. It is the podcast that puts the spotlight firmly on second place. Where else could we be recording this very fine episode in a very fine studio? Where else could we be, Dad? No, no other place other than the shared universe here in Eatontown, New Jersey. Mike and Ming taking great care of us. Kahuna behind the ones and twos. How are you, pal? I'm good, man. Always good to have you. I hear you. Um, now, the order that we record in is not usually the order that the episodes come out in. So uh, we're going to make an adjustment to the Jim Thorpe episode that's going to be coming out uh, the week of the Super Bowl. But uh, you have never seen like, and uh, uh, and we're out of here. Anyway, uh, and he died. But can I? <laughs> we're out of here. So, we got bum rushed the last time, man. But nobody's coming in after us here. I'm real sorry to Mike and Ming for uh, you know holding up another customer like that. Um, but uh, I'm excited today, Dad, because guess who we have in studio? Oh, in studio, none, none other than podcast <laughs> legends, <laughs> the Prince of West Orange. That's right. None other than Shining Wizards, Kevin <laughs> Joseph Gareev. Jesus. <laughs> the one, the only. Wow. <laughs> man, it's awesome to be here, man. KP, Larry, thank you so much. Kahuna! See? Hey! Thanks, man. Kev is one of my uh, one of the most important friends I ever made in my life. One of the first guys that really kind of... Uh, I actually met him through a podcast. This is a true story. The entire... He is saddled with me forever because of a podcast. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> All right. Well, what's the name of your podcast for those who are curious? Uh, we are the Shining Wizards uh, Wrestling Podcast. Now, it is a Ku Klux Klan-themed show, correct? That, that's right. <laughs> you know, I had some questions. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah pay no attention to that. We're the Shining Wizards. They're Grand Wizards. Because I'm not going to lie. When he said it earlier, I was like... Is, is that a Ku Klux Klan? Show? No. And then you're like, oh, that's the name of your podcast. And a, sh- a shining wizard is a, is a wrestling move. A badass oh, wrestling move. Okay. It is a, a running knee to the head while a wrestler is on the, on the ring, just kind of like sitting up or kneeling. You run and you knee him in the head. Uh, so that is the shining wizard. Sounds like fun. It is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a good podcast, too, man. I really like the whole crew over there. Uh, they've been kind enough to have me on as a guest a couple of times. And, uh, dude, they're killing it with numbers right now. So this is actually a get for us, Coons. All right, Ooh, we're borrowing from their listenership right now. I'm pretty happy. Well, we are, uh, you know, we are shared on the on the same platform, Shining Wizards Network. That's where uh, well, you can find this show and a bunch of other quality shows on that one, man. But uh, I'm stoked you're here, buddy. Uh, and also, Kev, real quick, what are you what are you drinking today? I am drinking a Ross Brewing Fine IPA. Indeed. The Navasink IPA. The Navasink guys. IPA, baby. Kev, I never get to say this before. The official beer of American Loser. <laughs> All right. There wow. It is. Ross Brewing's Navasink IPA. <laughs> That's big, buddy. It is. I'm so proud of you. It's available in New York right now. They're working on a couple other uh, states and everything, but take a look for them. Follow them on social media if you can. Ross Brewing's doing some cool stuff. It's very good. I'm on my uh, second solo cup's <laughs> worth. <laughs> yeah. When you guys hear a door creaking and slamming shut, yeah. that means that Kev went up to go get himself another solo cup. So. That's right. <laughs> of, the, Ross, of Ross Brewing. <laughs> <laughs> and if you feel like planning a podcast, we actually have a very limited time only. We have a kegerator of Ross Brewing beer. So well, if you I, want it, I think they're going to keep that keg. That's going to be a regular thing. Is I it believe. really now? I'm hoping. Because, okay, uh, cool. If not, because uh, you work here now, well, so I technically, <laughs> I technically am hired by Ross Brewing in order to do this. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's it's cool too because the beer is good. Uh, LP, it really you're, is. You're not even an IPA guy, and you're kicking. No, you're kind it's of all right. It's, it's absolutely all right. And then again, I'm not a, an IPA uh, first first call, but. Uh, um, this is all right. Get you know, it past me. I've come to the conclusion though that. Beer is not the problem. Uh, there was that quote from, I think it was uh, uh, Homer Simpson, beer, the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. Mm. Yeah, that's about right. It's go. a quote from Boom. Benjamin Franklin. Not necessarily in that order. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> Also true, Kevin. Um, there's another quote, too, that I think you would like on this one, uh, Shining Wizards, Kevin. All right. That, uh, ben, uh, I believe it was Benjamin Franklin. Ben said Franklin. That, uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, proof. Beer, beer is, is proof, proof that, that God, God loves, loves us. us. Yeah. <laughs> I'll love it. Pretty good quote, man. Yeah. It's a <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, so it's hard to argue with that. Now, what you want to stay away from is what they, uh, uh, obviously, whiskey has been regulated. 
nowadays, right? Which gets us into our topic today a little bit. Um, but back in the day, old school whiskey and old school hard liquors and stuff like that was known as, uh, do you know the nickname for it, Dad? White Lightning, Moonshine. White Lightning, the, the, the specifically old cowboy whiskey was known as uh, the Rot Gut. Rot Gut Ooh. whiskey. <laughs> yeah, the Rot Gut. And uh, this uh, this loser today has a little bit of experience with that. Is that fair with to the say? the Cowboys, yep. It's, uh, <laughs> the Old West. Well, uh, they always say don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. And today we have a good story and no way to really prove whether or not any of it's true. Okay. okay. We're, we're getting a little bit of a bullshit artist here. Uh, Kev, are you familiar with the literary term uh, unreliable narrator? I'm not too bright, KP. You're very so, smart. No, so no, I'm not. The, the most highly educated person in the room, and he's going to put himself down like no. that. Nah, so. I, I'm not familiar hey, with the I term. completed elementary school, damn it. <laughs> That's, That's right, right, Kahuna. You sure did. It's a- <laughs> I got that eighth grade diploma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, not for that. An unreliable, na- an unreliable narrator, for those that don't know, is a literary device that gets used a lot in uh, TV and films and stuff like that, too. And it's where the person telling the story is not really entirely accurate, or maybe they're, you know, maybe they're fabricating a couple of details yeah, right, here and right, there. Right. So, uh, now this is, it's an interesting move here, because you'd think it would be a bad thing that we can't prove whether or not this person's life is true or not. But it's kind of exactly how today's loser intended it. Her story is half factual, half legendary, but 100% loser. Ladies and gentlemen, Martha Jane Canary, or Cannery, Canary. depending on how you want to pronounce it, also known as, more famously... Calamity Jane. Calamity Jane. So, mm. well, off the top of your head, Cahoons, have, have you heard of Calamity Jane before? The, the name, yeah. that's That rings a bell, actually. Oh, totally. And, and not just bullshit. Like, actually. Like, I, that does sound familiar, but I don't know from where. Well, she's interesting because, uh, well, as we're going to cover, she's a real life person. Absolutely true. But her exploits get lied about all the time, kind of uh, sometimes by her doing the lying, and other times people just telling stories. And uh, she's actually been portrayed in uh, books. Um, the dime store novels like we were going to talk about in a little bit dad and all sorts of other stuff here but um, the movies and TV portrayals of her built into this legend so her own legend isn't even correct we're going to get into that towards the very end here but (laughs) worth noting uh, when people become famous out of nowhere like when Kevin's podcast popped for the first time people started googling him they said what do we know about this guy like well he went to Towson that's right Um, let's see what else he's uh, he's got a giant peen (laughs) Legendary, massive, <laughs> massive. Now, why do you know that? Uh, ma- uh, well, I, I used to have tonsils. Before ben, Fra- ben Franklin wrote a poem about it. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of Ben Franklin's many famous, inspiring quotes. <laughs> My peeing is neither the problem or the solution. <laughs> yeah, uh, we used Kev's peeing to discover lightning. <laughs> <laughs> we wrap a key around it. He's still and, here. And just stick him out. Of <laughs> 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 All right, that might be the hardest we've ever gotten and the uh, to laugh on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have superpowers. That's a- <laughs> Well, that's oh. when the, after the lightning struck. That's, that's exactly right. right. Kevin Grego, first human to ever get syphilis talk- from electricity. <laughs> we talked about white lightning before. You look, you're looking at him. I am white lightning. I am white lightning. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh. Kev, I knew you were going to be money. Um, <laughs> But it's always working. When the people become famous, uh, the first thing that the journalists start to try to do is they try to dig up, well, what do, we, what do we know about this person? But everything we know about Calamity Jane comes from her. And again, we, as we covered, she's an unreliable narrator. A lot of this stuff is larger than life because she wanted to you know, try to sell her image a little bit or people trying to profit off of her. You know, Literally, like what we just did there, Just I'm not even kidding here. Us just riffing about Kevin's, you know, fantastic penis is, um, it's actually weird because uh, we started embellishing details there. and all right. so, But all someone has to do is hear, and like if they were in the hallway, like this Kevin Garifo guy, he must have must have a piece and a half on him, huh? <laughs> That's right. And then that rumor gets carried around, and all of a sudden, that's your new reputation. Please spread it. (laughs) Far and wide. Far and wide of the shared universe. (laughs) We're sharing too much in this universe. (laughs) Well, that's where she gets really fun, man, because she's her own unreliable narrator. She wrote her own, uh, well, didn't really write, because we're going to cover this later. She was illiterate. But she probably spoke at length to a ghostwriter. You know, she had a kahuna handling uh, the sound and everything for her. Um... But uh, she would write this autobiography that was a quote written by her, but it was made into a pamphlet that Jane intended to uh, sell and uh, tour at these dime museums across the country. 
Uh, Dad, real quick, what is a dime museum? Well, dime museums were something that uh, gained great popularity in the uh, towards the end of the 19th century. So we're talking like you know 1850s on up into the early 1900s, um, and it was considered lowbrow entertainment. In other words, it was it was for the the unwashed masses, kind of like you professional wrestling. Right. Right? I was going to say like the the tabloids of. Uh, of, of today, maybe? Or, or, oh, there's, yeah, for sure. There's <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Like Us Weekly? Or, absolutely, yep. Yeah. That, uh, it's the newspapers that you see at the checkout line in the, yeah. in the supermarket kind of a thing. That, um, But these were uh, these were actually museums that uh, would set themselves up um, for distinctly different... Uh, they were distinctly different from the, you know, what we might think of as museums today, which was, you know, the, the highly educated and you're going in to, to appreciate fine art or some historical things. These, these were more um, uh, in the bigger cities, the urban cities, a lot of immigrants settled. Um, they were basically cheap entertainment, and uh, they started to really gain great popularity. But what I thought was neat, too, is that they were really the starting places for a lot of the careers of many notable uh, vaudevillians. So the, these dime museums which was a cheap entertainment. So you'd have the freak shows and, uh, you know, the, the bearded lady and the uh, general Tom Thumb. Um, some of the some of the biggies. The uh, man-eating chicken. The, <laughs> the man-eating chicken, all that type of stuff. <laughs> In New York City, there was um, really a, a, a very famous dime museum. It was Barnum's, P.T. Barnum's uh, American Museum. Um, and they, he, he kind of introduced this whole thing called uh, edutainment, where they would have these. Oh my God, that's what we do here on this show. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. These different freak shows and, and uh, circus performances and everything else. But uh, um, it, it was really the birthplace of, of vaudeville. Guys like Harry Houdini and some very famous. Uh, Ooh, loserception already. Yeah, there you go. Loserception again. That, that uh, wasn't even planned. We, we plan these sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, that's where they started to get... Um, but wait, didn't we mention P.T. Barnum in another episode? Uh, he a has come up ago? in the... Because pa- Barnum was... Uh, uh, He's I, come I, up a few times. He was in the Houdini episode. For yeah, sure. he was bigger than life. I mean, for, for the time period, too, he was very influential with, uh, you know, the Civil War era, um, New York City politics. Well, and, his museum uh, gets broken into during the draft riots, and that's why you can see, like, an elephant running around on Main Street. You know, <laughs> it was kind of, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, I mean, that was... It was cheap entertainment um, for not necessarily the, the hoi polloi, the, uh, the highbrow society. It was uh, somebody with a, a, a dime could gain entry in there and... Not for be, the hoity be, enter- be entertained by uh, the freak shows or the magicians or whatever the... Oddities. Uh, we'll be polite and call it oddities. So there very the well time. might have. So there very well might have been someone saying, "Step right up, step right yeah, up." Absolutely, like, and they would have not even far. They would have that. bands out out front to uh, bring drawing people in to uh, come see the come see the show. Come see Geronimo's that. girlfriend's hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the kind of stuff that they were popping out. But it was cool. They were popular, and Jane was going to capitalize on her fame, which we're going to get into, and we're going to kind of let the audience decide what they think is real. Cahoons, I'm going to ask you to start thinking of uh, the casting couch segment for this, but I want you to know that she has been portrayed so many times by so many very well-known actresses. One of them, she was actually portrayed by the woman who played uh, Lily Munster. I was reading, yeah, I was reading about her when you told it's me Yvonne the name. Yvonne DiCarlo, right? Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she played Calamity Jane. Dude, there, that's not even the weirdest one. That's how weird it gets. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah. there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, female actors that uh so everyone's tried to portray had their her chance the years but again as her every time her story is told it's embellished and, and it just kind of and that's just carry on jane's right, right, tradition right, <laughs> right i mean and this uh, illiterate uh, uh jane was illiterate to start with and now she's telling her life story to somebody else to write it down and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and she's embellishing it to begin with so you know don't don't let the facts get in get in the way of a good story. She's got a little pro wrestler to her, where she's no, she's her own hype woman. I mean, calamity. <laughs> <laughs> right. Come on, starting there. Uh, that's 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 pro wrestling at its finest. That's uh, from parts unknown. From parts unknown. <laughs> calamity, Jane. 
<laughs> well, uh, as best we can tell, Jane was born uh, on May 1st, 1852 near Princeton, Missouri. Yeah, now that was almost a, a Jersey time. Yeah, you got excited when for I'm a reading, I'm, I'm reading, where was she born? Princeton. Ah! In Mercer County. Yes, ah. yes. Missouri. Ah. <laughs> yeah, Missouri fakes out everybody because uh, they're like, oh, oh well, we're going to name our city Kansas City. But, but we're Missouri. <laughs> Eat shit. We have a football team. Missouri <laughs> Missouri is the state of cheap pops. That's a... <laughs> We're going to fool you into thinking that we're important. It, dude, that's a really, that's a gimmick in itself right there. That's <laughs> Well, um, now the typical American family here she grew up in. Uh, dad's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad is an alcoholic, degenerate uh, gambler, and mom spent some time working as a hooker. So, Got to bring home the bacon somehow. It's a, I hear you. Um, it's a, well, Jane was the firstborn, and uh, she was the oldest of six siblings. Okay. Uh, now, in 1865, what's going on in the country in 1865, Dad? Is there... Uh, it's the close of the Civil War, Kev. Per- perhaps perhaps yeah, some bloodshed? Of, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hard times, hard times. Well, uh, now, it is hard times, and I have a chance for a better life here. So the father, even though he's a degenerate alcoholic gambler, um, he's deciding he's going to relocate the family via a wagon train, Kahuna. Oh, no. Does this <laughs> sound familiar? <laughs> to yeah. Montana. Oh. Uh, all right. Yeah, and to be a gambler, I mean, he's he's rolling the dice with the whole family on, on one more shot at a better life, and load up the wagons. Yeah, we're going. It's uh, I, I wonder too if the wife was like, and there's no booze out there, so you're gonna have to be productive. <laughs> um, but uh, during the trip, Jane's mother Charlotte dies of pneumonia, which is wild because as we covered in the Donner Party episode, um, these trails out west. We look out on the parkway, and sometimes you see some trash on the side. I just imagine the graves that you're passing. Yeah. Everybody that's dying on the trail, man. It's this ain't an Good easy trip. God. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty gross. It's like mile markers, but with bodies. Um, <laughs> oh my god! But uh, so they get out there, and um, the trails are heading out west. Blah blah. The the Cannery family. We're going to keep calling them the Canneries. That's how I've always heard their name said. It's spelled Canary, but Cannery. I, I understand why you'd want a slightly different, you know. It's like our friend uh, Kevin. Uh, he calls himself Goatee, but uh, you know it's really pronounced Gooty. Yeah, you don't want yeah. you don't want a name with goo in it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he has a podcast. I won't plug it because I don't want you to listen to it. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Cannery family reaches Salt Lake City. All right, and uh, Jane's father begins his life over as a, a farmer. Finally, Kevin, yep. this guy's got his shit together. Yep, he's going to make a go of it. Oh, he's yeah. got his forty acres, and uh, he's trying to be the. The straight and narrow guy with uh, his what forty point, acre farm. At what point does he become a Mormon? You said he went That's to Salt Lake City. <laughs> well, he doesn't stick there. He's not there long enough, really, to do much of anything. He dies within the year. Ah, uh, That's yep. a shame. So, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a downer. I'll it's put it a, that yeah. way. Well, now imagine you're like uh, Missouri. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now uh, Jane is uh, what fifteen years old. Uh, I think she's maybe fourteen. Fourteen, maybe 15 years 15, old, yeah. and she is now in charge of her uh, entire family. Wow, she's right. the oldest. The remaining, yeah. yeah, she's the oldest. So now the other five siblings are uh, basically under, her kids. Under, yeah, <laughs> yeah she's so taking charge. You've heard of party of five. This is party of six. Right. So, um, wow, they're uh, they're in a weird spot with all that. Um, now this is prepare for loserception, Kahuna. Jane is now in charge of her siblings. Gets them all into a wagon on their way to Fort Bridger. The same fort that the Donner Party would utilize, where they were given their bad maps and their bad advice. So yeah, Fort Bridger's a real thing. And uh, again, that's our loserception here: the Donner Party and Calamity Jane colliding in history over this one specific. Uh, and I don't even know the time frames that they were there. I don't think it lines up at all. But just the idea that that was the rallying point, you know? Just damn. <laughs> that was a spot on the map. I mean, yeah. it, you're you're going into virtually uncharted territory well, we got at least. Indian territory we've got Fort uh, Bridger was brutal the uh, spot winters on the map. yeah you're going to want to know where you can get a hot meal right so um, now Jane gets the family out to Piedmont Wyoming and like we said Jane's about 15 years old at the time when she becomes the breadwinner for the five siblings she worked uh, any job that would pay Kevin have you ever been in a, p- a capacity to hire somebody no <laughs> no but uh, that's not true bartending Barta, well, you have an interesting resume, too, because I, I know that you're a podcast host, stand-up comic. Uh, you swing that big peen hammer we keep talking about. <laughs> and then uh, also, uh, we did social media work for a couple different companies. Yeah. You, uh, I, I know you've worked in local government before. You're a well-rounded cat. 
It's weird that none of it stuck. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've had I've had jobs all over the place. Yeah, well, so. uh, check this out for a resume here. Uh, let's see if this is a uh, let's see if Calamity Jane can compete with Shining Wizards, Kevin. Um, oh, she's got me beat. Her Look, looking after five kids. She's looking after five kids, but guess how she's doing it? She's gonna she'll work as a cook. She'll work as a dishwasher. All right, and these are all things. These are jobs she held. Cook, dishwasher, dance hall girl. All right. Yeah, that's um, that's like uh, dance hall girl is interesting because I think that's part hooker, part uh, like shot girl. That's your day job. Part yeah. Fallout Boy song. That's a. <laughs> and then uh, also just to round it out, cook, dishwasher, dance hall. These are all things that'll have you in like a tavern like setting until yeah. her last job, mule and ox team driver. <laughs> to quote our pal Big Rich from Jersey, when you look at a picture of. Uh, Jane Cannery, uh, who would become Calamity Jane, you look at her and you say, she's a handsome woman. <laughs> yeah. She wasn't noted for her beauty, but at no. the same time, uh, there wasn't too many job opportunities for a female out, out in, in the West at that time either. That, handsome you know, fella. You're, you're, yeah. <laughs> well, there's even a line, too. We're going to talk about uh, a person that she winds up meeting and becoming friendly with in a certain infamous town out West in South Dakota. But um, worth noting is that... Uh, the prostitution game out there, if you will, was very popular, mm -hmm. okay, because uh, there wasn't a whole lot of legality behind it. But there was uh, one madam in particular we're going to talk about later who had a thing where she was very attractive herself, and she preferred to y work with very attractive women in her establishment. Who wouldn't want pretty girls to run a business like that? Yeah, especially out west when the, the ratio of male to female it's is slim like, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, you're... There's not a whole lot uh, out there to uh, to choose from. So well, they told us in the Navy it was called boot camp goggles, okay, uh, or uh, or ship goggles, which is where you'd be on a ship with uh, you know a, a bunch of dudes, and the one girl that was on the ship who was probably like a six, you know, back home or something like that. If you're out at sea long enough, becomes a ten plus. Yes, <laughs> and then also, and uh, I'm not even going to lie. I know women that specifically said that they they love that part of it because it they their their value goes up through the roof so it's it's an interesting thing here but it winds up coming down to it that uh, uh you can't get a whole lot of very pretty girls out in the west here because it's slim pickings like we said and then also if uh if kevin and i are on a wagon train that's and we're right. coming into town right and we're sitting there it's like uh like listen you can either bang this uh you know that this homely looking girl or each other you have no <laughs> that's <laughs> it what are you gonna do and i was like all right i've spent enough time with kev we've been came here from colorado together um we're not that close that's you, either go broke, <laughs> you either go broke back or broke that's <laughs> <laughs> i like it that was a good line buddy that was solid um well jane is uh she's doing all these jobs she finally finds what is going to become one of her uh callings if you will in 1874 and uh, she begins working as a scout over at fort laramie okay uh, this job is what starts the transition of Jane uh, into the legend, and she becomes more popular. Uh, all the stuff that's about to wind up in her dime store novels, that's all about to come out here in spades. Yeah, just so, for the listeners, a, too. I mean, Jane, is, what, Kevin, actually her, Jane is actually her middle name, but... Uh, oh, at know, the time, yeah, Born Martha. Born Martha, but Jane is her middle name, and that's what the handle that is about to be applied to her is Calamity Jane. Which is hilarious. So <laughs> now uh, the way she gets the name too, we're going to talk about here in a second, but uh, Martha Cannery, not exactly a great stage name. Is that fair to say, Dad? Yeah, it doesn't have quite the ring to it. All right. So Garifo goes, first of all, I mean, my first name's Kevin. It's Kevin Patrick Burke, right? But uh, I've met other Kevin Patricks um, and I, I know far too many Kevins in comedy. So I well, that's going, the Irish. I mean, they can't. They don't only have a very limited number of names to, <laughs> to, to hand out when the birth of a male child. So Patrick is one of the biggies. But Kahuna, you're going to think I'm making this up. My father, uh, I think, was it was it mom that was pushing for my other possible name? Uh, well, we were looking through various books, but uh, I was almost named Tyrone. Get the what? It's, it's an Irish name. It's an Irish name. No it was, shit. It was yeah. culturally appropriated. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, dude. Could you imagine if I came in and you're like, "Oh, it's uh, it's Tyrone." Hello, Burke. welcome to this episode of American Loser. My name is Tyrone Burke. <laughs> 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 oh my god, I'm just gonna call you Tyrone for the rest of this. Well, I also had an, another weird one too. Is that a, a friend of mine? His name was uh, Daryl Tate. He, okay, one of my great pals. I love him to death on the USS Carney. And they told me that when the orders came through, the way that he spells Daryl, he didn't spell it the traditional way. He spelled it D-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. And uh, one of the chiefs was looking at us. We got this guy coming in. Uh, and now Daryl Tate, good old country boy from Georgia. 
okay, you know, tall, uh, like as pale as me, you know, and um, funny guy, very handy guy. But uh, the chief's looking through the orders. He goes, we got this kid, Darrell Tate, coming in. Darrell. So imagine they're, they're sitting there waiting for a black dude to show up to pick up at the airport. And then all of a sudden, just country bumpkin Tate comes in. <laughs> That's me. I'm Darrell. <laughs> Darrell. It's Darrell. Right. It's Darrell. and Darrell. It's Darrell, sir. And Tate, if you're listening to this one, pick your head up, okay? You always lead your head. <laughs> But uh, again, uh, Martha Cannery, not a great stage name. She's going to start going by Jane mostly at this point while she's serving as a scout uh, during a military patrol. Now, they send this military patrol. What are the indigenous people of the plains? How are they handling um, this westward expansion? They're not really happy about it that no. they're coming in on their on their homelands, actually. And yeah, and they've been in a pushed later episode, before. we'll find that uh, actually they're in Indian, Indian territory. We're on their We're, turf. Right. They're, they're on their homelands. No exactly. Doubt. Um, but it's pretty wild that way because, uh, like we said, she starts going by Jane. And she's going to get this new name after this bloody skirmish that they're on this patrol. They were out for a couple of days on a horseback. And uh, Jane finally gets her uh, her new moniker. Uh, you don't got to worry about locking it, Kev. Um, but uh, Jane gets her new moniker here. Uh, this patrol is under the command of uh, Captain Egan. Okay. Nice Irish boy. Nice but, Irish uh, boy. Thank you, sir. Uh, Egan's an, uh, a former bar that Kevin and I used to hang out in West Orange. Um but Captain Egan's party gets ambushed about a mile and a half from their post. They're on their way back. They're done with their patrol, and they get ambushed here. Now, during the, the actual mission, they had six soldiers were killed. So, th- th- like, they saw some heavy action. Uh, now, Captain Egan gets shot, and uh, Jane's uh, out riding as the scout. She's out in front of everybody. Now, she turns around as soon as she hears the gunshot. She sees that Captain Egan is about to fall off of his horse because he's been struck. And she takes off like a bat out of hell rides up next to him, catches him before he can fall off the horse, throws him over the front of uh, her saddle, and then rides him the next mile and a half safely back to the post. So she basically saves his life yep. uh, in action. Yep. Now, uh, when the guy's healing up, he respectfully but laughingly joked, uh, I name you Calamity Jane, the heroine of the plains. And uh, Jane goes, and ever since that day, uh, I've just been going by Calamity Jane. Yeah, now the only problem with that whole story is we got that story from Calamity Jane. Yep. That, that there's no no way of verifying that that's actually the way it went down. But it's a good story. We have a couple sayings on the show. Uh, don't fuck with TR, all right? Uh, don't mess with Boston, we'll get you, okay? We've learned that. And then um, also, not for nothing, um, no... You can't trust somebody who gives himself their own nickname. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> that's just kind of what it is. Well, so. that, that was her... Uh, that was her take on how she got the name Calamity Jane. There were there were others, but uh, well, there were there were two others that were pretty good. Um, now, Kev, uh, you ever throw some game at a uh, a damsel at a bar? Always. And does Always. She ever, does, she ever, uh, <laughs> does she ever warn you that uh, you're not ready for her? Yeah, they all do. Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you have to think about it. That's you were like, it. wait, that's all the time. I'm thinking like, oh, this one did, this one did, that one did, this one did. Yeah, so yeah, yes. <laughs> well, Kev, Kev knows a few of my uh, former paramours as well. So, um, But uh, there was one girl who was telling me, she goes, she goes, I don't think you can handle me. Ooh. And, uh, and she was right. Um, did she snap? <laughs> did, did she snap while she was doing well, it? I'm pretty sure it... she's in the Middle East right now killing people. Oh. So. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. Um, but anyway... Um, Anytime these guys at the fort, uh, Fort Laramie was uh, the fort over there where she was uh, working at. As by the way, she was also working a little bit as a uh, as a hooker herself now. Dance hall gal. Yeah, dance hall. She's throwing some stuff out there. Um, now LP's got some notes for us here in a second on that because um, I, I thought this was worth noting. Now Fort Laramie was uh, in itself is I, I think it's still standing. I'm not actually sure, um, but there was a, a, a three mile hog ranch where uh, Jane worked as a prostitute hanging out with the local soldiers. Yeah, and it's very nice that uh, it's been uh, National Register of Historic Places is the uh, Three Mile Hog Ranch outside of Fort Laramie. That um, Three miles outside of Fort Laramie, there was a uh, saloon and uh, um, shop, store, that kind of a thing that where the soldiers could go and... Uh, Sounds like the Navy Exchange and get the a, uh, MWR get, bar I used to hang out yeah. at in Jacksonville. <laughs> get a drink. And, of course, out back there was uh, some other uh, festivities that would be could be acquired for the for the right price. And, uh, again, uh, there's such a, a lack of female uh, accompaniment that uh, 
even if you're, somebody's got a mug like Calamity Jane, that uh, she's still able to, uh, she's got the work in parts that is still worth paying for. So uh, Now, again, we keep, because my favorite part of the episode in the research was writing down all the actresses that have played different versions of her. And I can tell you that depending on, um, now if you guys watch Deadwood, like I, I loved the show Deadwood on HBO, uh, she was played by uh, Robin Weigert, and that was what's considered one of the most accurate portrayals of her. And she was not, I think she gets into like a lesbian relationship on the show. And um, they talk about, uh, it was a whole weird thing where she never really had a guy around. She was very rough looking. She was dirty all the time, very drunk. But um, if the uh, some of the other actresses were playing her that we're going to cover later, I'm going to remind you that we said this, the uh, line at the Three Mile Hog Ranch to uh, get any sort of time with her would have been three miles long itself. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so she's... Uh, She's yeah, and the whole term "hog ranch" is is, is just a uh, slang expression that uh, there was a, any number of different uh, so-called hog ranches along the trails uh, in Wyoming. That that was just a place that you know what, what you were going right. there for. That's a, a drink, oh, a I didn't drink. put that together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so a hog ranch was like. Ah, yeah, right, all right. right. All right. right. I'm picking up what you're putting down there. Right. there you go. <laughs> Is it bad that now I get it? I didn't get it. Uh, Kuna, I didn't get it either. No, like it, now it's clicking. I'm uh, like, okay. Well, you know what it is? Here's why you were confused, because it's a three-mile hog ranch, and you have a hog and a half. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So well, like that's the end. Well, that's a, a, a hog ranch <laughs> seems like a feasible thing that someone in like the Midwest, the West or Midwest would have. Are we there still? Or? It, well, uh, it, it's. I'll tell you what. It kind of has a vibe of, uh, say, a cat house. All right. Right. Which we're gonna explain we'll get the, into later. the etymology right. of that. I'm excited. In a second. Yeah. I'm excited. This, I told you it was gonna be a good one. Yeah. We don't. We really don't do bad episodes here. We have ones where it doesn't go as cool as we want it to. But this one is gonna be a home run. Um, so James, uh, you know, she's an interesting lady here. Jane is uh, making, you know, we can't prove that, that story is true, but what she would tell the guys at uh, Fort Laramie is that uh, whenever they were trying to get with her, like flirt with her a little bit, throw some game her way, she would say, you are attempting to court Calamity herself. So then her nickname started to become Calamity. So she gave herself her own nickname, but like in a, uh, a, self, um, uh, a self-referential way that uh, it kind of took off from there. So they think that's what... Now, she was very popular on base. Why wouldn't you like this chick? She can cook, she can clean, she can scout, she can drive your mule and ox team, and she'll blow you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's, a, she's one of the boys. I mean, she's... She really is, yeah. She is one of the boys, but at the same time, she's got the, the, the body parts that make her not one of the boys and a little more friendlier than the so, boys. So, so can I ask you guys something? <laughs> Talk to me. Do, no, no, this is, do you think the fact that she was trying to give herself her own nickname was trying to build up her own reputation? Totally. So that people would just know who they're dealing with when they see Calamity Jane? Absolutely. Right. And it works. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah, there yeah, is something right. to be said for that, I guess. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you called it before a stage name and she's not on the stage at this particular point, but she's, she's gaining a reputation just by her name. Well, you got to have a rep to, to hang out on base like this. Now, what's even more hilarious, did, like, the term bullshit artist comes up a lot. Like, Kevin and I, you know, we, we kept us stand-up as well. You know, we, like, we're hanging out with comics all the time. Nobody's full of more shit than stand-up comics. That's true. Um, yeah. it's, it's pretty remarkable. Um, but uh, so they love to talk about themselves, put themselves over it, and you just feel like, oh, this guy's a nice guy, but he's a bullshit artist. So Jane's funny, right? Everybody likes her on the base because she gets drunk all the time. She's very generous. Anytime she has money, she's buying the boys' right. drinks and stuff. So why wouldn't she be popular on base? Yeah, and she was also popular on base because a lot of times she would not collect for the sexual favors that she just yep. bestowed on somebody. So it was a, a freebie. Yeah, yeah. She, was a, she was a quality gal. She was a <laughs> philanthropist. <That's> a <laughs> Philantro philanthropist? No, you got it. That uh, was it. Beautiful. A, stick to your guns. All right, man. I'm done. Believe in yourself. I'm out. <laughs> Have a great show, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what it is? Um, Kev's usually, uh, he's usually a Bud Light guy, but that is the Ross Brewing Navisink IPA slowly working its way through his brain. I'm Navisinking, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pun master. Um, but not for nothing here, uh, some of the officers on base, when they were asked, like, you know, everybody's, she's cool, everybody likes Jane, but somebody goes, oh, is it, is it true what Jane would say? And officers on the base actually even wrote written accounts where they spoke to um, local papers and stuff, saying uh, Jane was merely just like a likable hangaround. 
You know what I mean? She wasn't. She never saw an Indian fight. She never even witnessed a lynching or anything like that. All these stories in her dime store novel to, to get her that tour, right? Uh. She was making shit up because she wanted to bolster her reputation, like Kev was saying. So, uh, and then like we said, she's uh, words to describe her. By the way, I thought were uh, devilish and notorious. Those were words that are getting thrown around about her. But like we said, she's a popular chick. Uh, it's it's easy to see why she would be. Um, Kev, off the top of your head, do you know the definition of the word calamity? <sighs> Just from what I've seen on cartoons <laughs> in, the, in the early 90s. No, I don't. Well, the, uh, Nonsense? The definition of calamity is uh, an event causing distress or sudden damage, also known as a disaster. Ooh. So if, uh, if a girl introduced her, hey, what's up? I'm the disaster. And then you'd be like, well, I'm the situation. So. <laughs> <laughs> the master of the disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Folks around here call me the grenade. <laughs> <laughs> I know her, actually. She's very sweet and very pretty um, in real life. Um, anyhow, uh, another story that uh, Jane liked to tell. Um, and by the way, this is hilarious, too, because uh, there was a, a famous picture of her that we pulled up from the Wikipedia page that was um, of uh, it, literally the photo is known, the description of it. You know, Calamity Jane smokes a cigar while making breakfast. <laughs> She's a woman after my own heart. Yeah, she ain't fucking around, dude. Out in the kitchen, (laughs) cooking up breakfast, smoking on a stogie. Yep, uh, it is what it is. Now, uh, Coons, I'm going to ask you just to pull up on the big screen because I want to show off some of the um, uh, the, the actresses that have played her, too, Mm -hmm. so we can try to draw a comparison between what she really looks like and what uh, certain... What Hollywood has... Yeah, uh, because Ivana Carlo, that's a good name right there from the Munsters because she's a very attractive woman. And... um, I saw some other names that stuck out. Oh, well, there's some good ones, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, now not for nothing, Dad. Uh, this yeah, last... I got a personal fave too that uh, we'll talk about. But no way. Go ahead. No. All right, I'm excited. <laughs> Look at LP it. opening up. <laughs> it, it, it's mom, right? Mom. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, yes. Yeah, so now this other story, and this is the one because this is kind of the break in the story here because um, this is where people really know her from. But. Uh, Another story that Jane has, uh, it tells of her, and by the way, she's always the hero in her own stories. I'm sure you picked up on that, Dad. Right. No, absolutely. You know, it's, <laughs> right. I, I came in, it, it's, it's almost a Cliff Clavin to her. <laughs> right. Hey, ever tell you, Sammy, about the time I went over to Deadwood Camp, <laughs> <laughs> saved a wagon train from a couple of Plains Indians? Yeah, I tell you that. <laughs> yeah. I'm watching too much Cheers lately. Um, yeah, that's the third time you brought up Cheers uh, to me today. <laughs> Uh, it's where we were Indians all around us. It's where yeah. <laughs> trying to tell us something. So it's, I uh, said to myself, self, I said, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that Florida. Let me tell you. Uh, but uh, here's the story that Jane has. She bravely swims across a dangerous and freezing river in order to deliver these important dispatches critical to the U.S. cavalry. All right. Like we said, she's always the hero in her own stories. And while she's recuperating from an illness that she acquired from her heroic endeavor. She holds up at uh, Fort Laramie, okay? And she uh, then, when she's there, is a, a wagon train comes into town with a couple of people on it. Um, these are more names that I think, if you guys know Calamity Jane, you know these other names, you just don't know why you know them. So, uh, Kev, off the top of your head, I'll tell you what, I'm going to ask Kahuna first. I'm going to be tough on Kahuna. Uh, Charlie Utter, you ever heard of him? No, not even. Known as Colorado Charlie? No. Ah, good old that, that CC. doesn't ring a bell. That's not a, even not even a little. He's not the one that's going to ring it for you. What about um, James Butler Hickok? Yes. Yeah, okay. I know also, that name too. Also, you want to talk about a stage name? What's what do you think is James Butler Hickok stage I, I, name? I know that. Talk to me. It's Wild Bill, right? Wild Bill Hickok. Wild Bill. You want a good nickname, man? Oof, that's the one. That really is the one. So, by the way, if you look at him too, and you just look at like the picture, because I believe that's a photograph of him. That's a pro wrestler right there. He, if I've he, ever seen one, literally, he looks like he should be uh, Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but he's a handsome guy. Yeah. There's, a, there's actually a little Larry Burke to him. If I'm looking at him, you yeah. ever think about growing he's your hair? He's got hair there? though. <laughs> that stash. He's got hair that he yeah. can grow out. It's. I'll, I'll tell you what, man. If uh, if you had my hair and I had your mustache, man, you we'd go. have been something. There you go. <laughs> but. Um, so, Dad, off the just briefly here, um, this Wild Bill Hickok wagon train is now coming through Fort Laramie, 
And it's not really his train. He's not running the train. Uh, no, the other guy, Utter, I believe, is the uh, well, uh, yeah, Charlie Utter, wagon master. He is that. But um, it, it's Wild Bill is a celebrity already. At this Absolutely, point. he's already a folk hero of the of the American West, well, if you will. Then. Let's not burn him for, and because I, I think he would be fun to revisit for his own solo episode. Absolutely. But let's let's tell the audience a little bit about this guy. Well, he's just a, uh, as I say, he's a, a folk hero. He's a. He's a drover. He he's had been a wagon master. He's a Civil War veteran, a soldier, a spy, a scout, a lawman, a gunfighter. An actor? A gambler, a showman. He was an yeah, actor. An yeah. actor. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, so he, he is it, and he's a larger-than-life uh, larger figure. He was a Russian asset, too, wasn't he? <laughs> Didn't he interfere well, in the elections? I can't remember. I nah, might be confused. That was on a down <laughs> Um but yeah, he's uh, he's he's a well-known celebrity, if you will. Uh, but his celebrity is by his own exploits, not because of his acting ability or something like that. But just well, the, you the shoot shit enough that people, he's done, they're going right? to find out who you right. are. <laughs> yeah, right, and, and he's again with a with a nickname, Wild Bill Hickok. That uh, you know, um, there's it's still being disputed as to how many guys he, how many lives he actually took but uh, whether it was verified or in in legend if if you will but yeah he's, he's you big. want pageantry too by the way Kevin? or in us weekly us weekly <laughs> us weekly there you go <laughs> they'd be covering now not for nothing there's a little pageantry almost like pro wrestling again where uh he's got the the big long mustache coming down pat he's got the nice he's got really long hair down to his shoulders and he carries uh twin pistols all right, and he's got a badass reputation and a stage name. He is entrance music away from entering the King of the Ring tournament. Oh, he probably had it. <laughs> <laughs> he probably had it at King of the Ring tournament. Right. Number number thirty in the Royal Rumble, Wild Bill Hickok. Dude, he, I'm telling you right now, that's what like ninety percent of professional wrestlers look like nowadays. With, I don't, yeah, with, with the long hair and the mustache, and uh, everyone's trying to go retro and then look cooler with the with the mustache and the long hair, and and uh, he, he's got it. He's got the look right there. He's not even retro at that. He's 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 cutting edge. He's He's intro. (laughs) (laughs) Very good, sir. Very good. I I got nothing. Well, real quick, what else do you have on uh, Wild Bill? Because I I do want to, because we're talking about him because he's an exciting guy to talk about. Well, he he's going through Fort Laramie, and uh, he's the guy that gets uh, Jane. I think she was uh, incarcerated at the time. She's in jail for whatever <laughs> for whatever reason, uh, whether it was you know for whatever reason. But he <laughs> kind of befriends her or takes pity on her or whatever. But um, she now comes into this wagon train that's that's heading north to the. Because gold has been found uh, further north, and this wagon train is heading there, hopefully. Getting to, out to prospect. To strike, right. And what's uh, what's the name of the town? that? Uh, uh, that would be uh, West Deadwood. Orange. <laughs> West Orange, <laughs> West Orange New Jersey. That's it. <laughs> right. West Orange, and a West Orange, Texas. Go, go West, our... young man. Go West. So we yeah. started in Orange, and now we're in West Orange. <laughs> no, no, not exactly. I'm sorry. That started in Princeton, now we're here. <laughs> yeah. That was an impulse. I'm sorry. Continue. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, what's the name of the town? An infamous town. Yeah, Deadwood. Deadwood, South Dakota. That's right. And that's, again, now we're actually venturing into places that we're not supposed to be because that was really Indian territory. Mm-hmm. But uh, gold was found. So, you know. Screw, now it's our territory. Screw the Indians. Yeah. It's <laughs> us. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of um, the show Deadwood, which I loved uh, on HBO, as we talked about. The problem with that uh, was that there was a lot of things that were not technically historically accurate. Okay. We're doing great on time, by the way. We're, we're kicking ass here today. Um, but... Uh, there were a lot of things that weren't technically accurate uh, that they had to do in order just to make the show more entertaining. But one of the things that they were very serious about was the camp was under the threat of Native American attack at all times because they were not even – before they called it a town, you have to have a, you know, a state in order to have a town. You have to, they were a territory back then. So literally they were just a camp. That was what it was. It was right. a camp. So these guys are on their way out there. It's like getting on the ground floor. Okay, So Hickok's on his way out there. Um, now we were talking about – Calamity kind of bringing her own name up a little bit here. You got this famous gunfighter uh, who's coming in in Wild Bill Hickok. Colorado Charlie, Charlie Utter, is a well known guy too at this point. And he's been traveling with Hickok. That's like his, uh, his man Friday, if you will. Um, but uh, you would think that the arrival of this uh, famous gunfighter in town is going to be a big deal. But, uh, and it is, it's a huge deal. However, the July 15th, 1876 edition of the Black Hills Pioneer 
has a headline that read simply, Calamity Jane has arrived. Right. So her her fame and fortune, if you will, her uh, her story is is big as well. So everybody knows Calamity Jane as as this larger than life person. So she's you know her publicist, if you will, <laughs> has already uh, uh, bought her fame and fortune to uh, to this little skis camp town of uh, Deadwood. Are, are we off the, uh, the the Bill Hickok thing? Can I, can I throw my little tidbit of knowledge about Wild Bill Hickok? Please do. Um, as we sit on this uh, in this great studio on this poker table. Uh-oh. There you go. Uh, I'm a big poker guy, huge poker fan. And uh, there's a poker hand that's called Dead Man's Hand. Correct. Aces and eights. Yes. Which is the hand that Wild Bill Hickok was holding. Correct. If you haven't already told us, I'm sorry, you probably have on this podcast. No, at no, some uh, point. we haven't gotten to it just yet, but it, it's it definitely is worth noting. And I think LP, you had something yeah, else. Yeah, we're going to go. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't. No, 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 no. Shut no, up, that's, Kevin. That's perfect. God damn it. That's perfectly. <laughs> that's perfect. Um, <laughs> Because I'm, I'm a huge poker guy, so when... Uh, no, that's why it's perfect. Yeah. Yep. We, we have to get into... Um, so they're just coming into town right now. So this is where all these events... It's almost like every single day in Deadwood history is being made. It right. really is. Right. Um, but, but it's at this point in time, too, where Calamity Jane is in, like infatuated with Wild Bill Hickok. She... You know, the sun ah, and the spoiler. moon and the stars all align around Wild Bill with uh, as far as Calamity Jane. But that was not necessarily reciprocated that uh, Wild there, there's Bill... There's reports. Was, there, there were... Yeah, and, and then to hear Calamity Jane say at one time they were actually married. Uh, but that was... It gets, yeah. Unsubstantiated, if you well, will. Th- let's, I'll tell you what, just because uh, there's so much wild knowledge about this guy, and I want to make sure we just present the info in the right way so that the audience can kind of track with us. So they're getting into town, all right? And she's making the papers, and they're like, holy shit, Calamity Jane's in town, Wild Bill Hickok's in town, Colorado Charlie's. So if you're a local you know, guy here sitting like, oh, oh, how much longer is this going to be my town? Am I about to get kicked out of my own camp kind it's of a Calamity thing? Con yeah, right there, there's, Calamity there's... Con. Calamity <laughs> 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 uh, that was, Con. That was money, my friend. Yeah, Two I mean, gems. If that's... you're looking for characters, I mean, Deadwood is just absolutely chock full of characters. Oh, from, that's why it made such a great from, yeah, show. Absolutely. Uh, and, those are the cosplayers. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the, these people are risking everything with the opportun- with the with the hope of uh, you know making it making it rich with the with the gold. Well, I'm going to ask. Never mind that it's you're on Indian territory and you're not supposed to be there in the first place. But that's you know. There's well, a, we don't there's talk a, about that. There's a, huge, <laughs> there's a huge risk and a huge gamble for everybody involved. So everybody is is a character in in, in Deadwood. Very much so. Now, while we're bringing this next point up. Kahuna, do me a favor and just uh, look up Deadwood on uh, Google Maps and see how far it is from the studio, if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. So, uh, not for nothing, Jane arrives into the camp. She rides in with Bill Hickok, who, like you said, she's got an infatuation with. Depending on what reports you're hearing from Bill Hickok, he either, like you said, Dad, winds up being married to her in secret kind of a thing, or that they were in love with each other, or, uh, as one person said, he had nothing, he, he didn't give two shits about Calamity Jane, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of like when when Kevin walks down the street in West Orange and women just start throwing themselves at him and he goes, "Please, ladies, all right, you know, I don't have time for this." That's, yeah. that's what we call the hog ranch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and wow, Bill's a good-looking guy. Let's, let's uh, face we it. We saw the picture, and now you got yeah. Calamity Jane, who's noted for not being the most attractive female mm-hmm. that God put on the face of the earth, and she is noted for. The being in buckskins in men's clothing kind of a thing that she's not. She dresses like a dude. She yeah. She, yep. She dresses uh, like a dude. Smoke cigars while she makes you breakfast kind right, of a thing. Right. Oh, well, Bill, did you marry Calamity James? I ain't marry no butch. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you brought it up here, Cahoons. So Deadwood, South Dakota, which uh, a place I want to go one day. Right. Um, very badly. Twenty-seven hour drive. Twenty-seven hour drive doesn't look like traffic's too bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. It's Kahuna and the uh, the Channel Ten cops are up here. It looks like it's be- thanks, KP. So it's looking like traffic is going to be perfect for your for your excursion to Deadwood. It's about a uh, thousand seven. Uh, well, shit, I can't read numbers today. I had a stroke there. One thousand seven hundred and seventy-eight miles. Oh, that's right. Kahuna. No, that's our eyes in the sky. The eyes in the sky. <laughs> traffic report. Just well, drop me off somewhere in Missouri, please. <laughs> and that's Kahuna's report on Eyewitness News. Well, we got uh, nice. So one hundred one thousand seven hundred seventy-eight miles 
there's no way we're going to have a Jersey connection with Deadwood, are we? Uh, uh, what the no. fuck? Yeah, we with Deadwood? Me? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. <laughs> what is this? Show your work, Larry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, there it shit. is. All right, He's here looking we go. for proof positive, and we have it. Yeah, she arrives into Deadwood, and um, upon her arrival into this, uh, with this world-famous gunfighter and a and, uh, whole big deal, uh, she is quickly uh, befriended by uh, Miss Dora Dufran, who winds up uh, giving us our Jersey connection for, for this particular episode. Now, Miss Dora Dufran was, a, uh, was born in Liverpool, England, and immigrated to the United States with her parents. Um, and once she s- stepped ashore into the great America, uh, the family settles in our own, ready for the drum roll, <laughs> none other than Bloomfield, New Jersey. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Where I have a show coming up. <laughs> <laughs> so Every yeah. other Wednesday. That's a, uh, so so the, plug. <laughs> so Miss Dora Dufran, who, is, who goes on to become like a very, very famous, very profitable madam in, in Deadwood. One of the most prosperous in all of Deadwood. And, and, and she was hot, and, too, and, they said. In all of the Old West, uh, more, than li- more, than, more than likely, that she would hold that particular title, if we're wow. talking about wrestling titles. <laughs> she, she's, she's, madam, she's Madam Supreme. I believe she had a belt. Uh, yes, yeah, she had a belt. But... Uh, <laughs> She had a, a sketchy background too, because uh, I mean, she took on the, the, up the profession of uh, prostitution at the tender age of fourteen, yeah. uh, doing it for the army soldiers to begin with, and then she moves into Deadwood with the promise of the gold field, and she moves up there with all, all these other miners, all these men that were hoping to strike it rich. Well, well, you were talking to me earlier, too, because you were saying that she does get into prostitution at age 14. She's known as very, very attractive. Oh, yeah. She's a looker. Yeah. Well, imagine that. An English girl showing up with a little Jersey attitude out in the West. You know, it's 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 an appealing mix. (laughs) There you go. um, But I I do wonder about that because it's always like you ever hear people say, man, I was just born in the wrong generation. Um, Well, if there's 14 year olds doing prostitution, R. Kelly was just born in the wrong generation. (laughs) Kahuna just left the room on that one. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. Come back. I know he was your godfather. <laughs> I'm actually going to leave the room and uh, get myself some of this beautiful if, if I may. Ross uh, Brewing Company Navasink uh, IPA. <laughs> there you go. That was one of the dirtiest jokes we ever told on the show. I'm sorry. But uh, that being said, we found that Jersey connection. I'm so happy about that. Um now, we were talking about this earlier, though, too, that Jane's relationship with Wild Bill Hickok, cloudy at best. Is that fair to say, Dad? Cloudy, yeah. I mean, it all depends on who you want to believe, right. whether it's Wild Bill or whether it's uh, Calamity or uh, who. Cohen, do you ever have a, a, a girl that just um, – well, I, I'll tell you what. I had um, – did you ever make up a fake girlfriend? No. No, I won't lie. Not you. I, I, <laughs> I did it, um, I, I exaggerated something once where it was a, a girl that I had a flirtation with. I said, oh, yeah, I've been dating her for, you know, weeks or something. Because, you know, there's like a nervous, uh, there's a nervousness with stuff like that. Yeah. But now, according to for who you ask. For For white dudes. Kahuna is Chinese, by the way, if you guys don't know. don't listen to this show. Yes. Um uh, but, no, so there's um, there's a nervousness with this, but there's always, um, it, depending on who you ask about uh, Calamity Jane's relationship with uh, Wild Bill, you're going to get a different answer. There was a woman uh, a couple of years later, in 1941, I believe it was, who uh, came out claiming to be the daughter of both Calamity Jane and Wild Bill Hickok. Right. She was okay. the, she was the love child. Of, yeah, that's or, what she's... Or not, depending a, a on... A legitimate child, right. yeah. So... Uh, there's documents and paperwork that she's able to, to produce that says that she was uh, legally married. Thank you very much, Kev. Um, that she was legally married to Wild Bill Hickok. Right? Now, here's the thing. Um, what do we say about Jane? She was functionally illiterate. Right, 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 right. So now all of a sudden, so now she's signed letters. the documents and everything else. That, oh, yeah. Yeah. And she's got like 250 letters that were written. Uh, to her uh, by her mother kind of a thing she's like oh yeah my mother kept she was we were pen pals and all that. not really you yeah know? and she right. can't read or write dude. right um so those uh everything here the skeptics are kind of they they pretty much debunked that 
I like I like how Calamity James and Wild Bill kind of have like a Kermit and Miss Piggy kind of dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the puppets. She drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> um, oh man. No, that's uh, that holds up too. It, is it not an episode of American Loser where I don't make at least one Muppet reference? Well, like, come dude, on, it's I love it. your charm. That's perfect. I'm a big right, Muppet guy. On. That's right on target. Again, Hog Ranch. That's. <laughs> 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 You <laughs> well, um, these uh, supposed signed documents are pretty much debunked here. It also gets a little bit wild, pun intended, because uh, Jane, get this. Uh, if you ask some of the people that knew Wild Bill, they said that he had absolutely no use for her, that she was like a nuisance to him. Okay. Then she's saying that, oh, this is, uh, I cared so much for him. I was in, you know, in love with him. But, then this woman saying, oh, they were secretly married, and I'm actually their love child, and all this other shit. Uh, meanwhile, Wild Bill had just been married to another woman at that point right. already, so it's very doubtful. That that and there's happen. a lot of letters uh, that Wild Bill wrote, because he was literate, Yes, that he's writing to his to his wife and yes. everything else. And it was <laughs> not that you would be writing your, your wife about um, this new love interest but uh, in Calamity Jane, but... Uh, Got this scrappy drunk chick always following me around. Yeah, right. It's weird. Dresses in, in buckskin and, and dude's clothes. Yeah, it's a. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's a she's a trip that way too, though, because Kahuna, guess where Calamity Jane wanted to be buried when she died? Uh, our own New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> a, a smart guess based off the ratios of information we've provided over the year or so, but um, no, uh, she wanted to be buried next to Wild Bill Hickok. So imagine that. Imagine a girl who's in love with you that you're like, that's eh, nice. Okay, I got, <laughs> I got my own thing going here. And um, she winds up getting buried next to you. Now, a couple of the people. Nags for all eternity. It, it, that's literally what it was. <laughs> One guy says, oh, yeah, we did that as a prank because Bill didn't really like her. So we figured it'd be hilarious Just if we <laughs> stuck with her for Even eternity. Even after death, we're still yeah. breaking his stones. And then it was her request to be buried. That was, so it was the, the Black Hills Pioneer Society are the ones who uh, went ahead and put that information in for her. So. He's somewhere, and he's just like, kill me. I'm already dead. <laughs> well, speaking of how he dies, uh, I, I do want to get to this one little thing here. Um, yeah, because there is, a, there is it, in Wild Bill's death, there is a, a tie-in with oh, Calamity totally. Jane. Your guest well, just shot up like, oh, it's my time to shine. No, I, I feel bad about bringing it up <laughs> no, earlier. No, 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 you're good. That, that was perfect, because everybody kind of knows the story, man. Uh, all right, so it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't anything that I brought to the table? No, 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 no. The dead man's hand, all that stuff is stuff people remember, but you're the one who gave them the information. So That's right. Jane is also said to have attacked uh, uh, Jack McCall with a meat cleaver. Real quick, though, Dad. Who's Jack McCall? Uh, Jack McCall was a degenerate. Uh, I mean, Deadwood is all kinds of degenerates, so he was just one of many. Uh, he is uh, notorious for his drunkenness and his stupidity, <laughs> was one quote that I found. Did he, uh, did he host a podcast uh, He's with also known as Crooked Nose Jack. <laughs> um, he was not a handsome man in that... Uh, Long-haired, cross-eyed, uh, double chin. Uh, he was not noted as being really sharp, but um, just a side note: the actor who played him on Deadwood was so unrecognizable in his um, in the makeup and everything that they did him with, and like rubbing dirt on his face and having the upturned nose and kind of a, a scar on his face. That that same actor came back a season later playing a different character. Oh, is and that no, right? Really? No Nobody that. Paid <laughs> that. Okay. You know who made a good uh, Calamity Jane? And B. Davis from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Alice. <laughs> there you go. I'm off to see the butcher. <laughs> yeah. Sam. Uh, Sam. Wild Sam. <laughs> Wild Sam. <laughs> Sorry, all right, go ahead. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> but it's one night Hickok is uh, in the saloon and he's um, playing poker and winning big time. That's right. And Jack McCall is at the bar and just getting drunker and drunker. And then finally, at the table, one guy gets up and leaves. Jack McCall asks to come in and sit in his place. They allow that to happen and then loses everything. Hickok is just winning hand after hand after hand. And this guy, is, he's, he's shit-faced, and he's losing nice. all his money and gets you know more agitated as the night goes on. At the end of the evening, after he's like cleaned out, 
um, Hickok gives him a couple of bucks so he can at least go buy breakfast. So, you know, Hickok is throwing him, throwing him the bone kind of a thing, but McCall is definitely pissed off at this. Um, he, he, he's like simmering. He's like fuming over this whole thing about it being disgraced at, at the poker table. And Deadwood Hickok. season one does a perfect, that's one thing they're absolutely historically accurate with. So now McCall comes back the next day. He's still pissed off. Um, Hickok always wanted to sit at a certain spot within the saloon so that he could see who's coming in the door. And uh, this particular evening, somebody's sitting in his seat. So rather than make a big scene, Hickok sits, but now his back is to the door. And then McCall comes in. He's already he's already liquored up because, again, he's a drunk. And he shoots um, Wild Bill Hickok in the back of the head, point-blank range, and, and kills him. Um, and then tries to escape, runs out the door, jumps on a, somebody else's horse. The saddle that was on that horse wasn't cinched up tight, so like he falls on, <laughs> falls on the ground. He was trying, a dumb shit. Yeah, he was absolutely a dumb shit, a drunk dumb shit, um, and tries to get away. And then uh, this is, again, this is an Indian, Indian territory, so there's no real law and order kind of a thing. But the miners in the camp now form this um like a posse well no they they captured the guy because he you know he just fell on the ground trying to get away um <laughs> but, excuse me gents i'm trying to make my getaway <laughs> yeah they appoint a judge they appoint a jury they appoint a, a a defender for this guy within this camp but again there's no real law because they're they're illegal to begin with because they're in indian territory they're not in any state um so there's a whole trial that comes on for this Jack McCall, and he is found, uh, he's, he gets away. And then with that, there's rumors that Calamity Jane is going after this guy with a meat cleaver because she just killed the love of, of her life, uh, Wild Bill Hickok. That's later proved to be BS because she was locked up someplace else that there was no way that that could have happened so jane's uh, again a little bit of a bullshit artist right you know i bet if jack had just eaten his breakfast and been grateful that the right. call, hickok had just <laughs> given him money for way. it absolutely. he would have been fine absolutely. but no absolutely. there was also something weird with mccall that when he went to try to shoot other people in the crowd every other round in the revolver was a dud oh is that it's right a true story okay yeah. and um, and at his trial with these miners <laughs> forming this you know quasi uh, trial uh, thing McCall claims that the reason he shot Hickok was not because of the poker game but because Hickok had shot his brother earlier yeah, total and the other ter- which was proven yeah. to be later on I didn't know, that part, of the st- yeah. I didn't know that part of the story yeah. it's a fabrication and, and, uh, and Hickok was holding a pair of aces and a pair, pair of, eight. of eights so aces and eights have always become known as the dead man's hand yeah. and, and it's referenced all the time in poker so cool. right. ever since right and then um, so that goes on today McCall gets out he he goes off to the uh, to the other territories in Wyoming and he starts bragging to anybody he meets I killed Wild Bill Hickok mm-hmm. that he's using that as a bragging point a lawman in that other territory now that he's back in legal US territory and not in Indian territory there's a second trial because because that first one he it's not double indemnity that there's a second trial because yep. that first one was all bullshit. We were in, you were in Indian territory. So he's tried again uh, while Bill's brother comes to that trial. They find this guy guilty, and it's later found out that in that first trial, he was claiming that he killed Wild Bill because Wild Bill killed his brother. That's total bullshit because he didn't have a brother. Yep. So, uh, but they, they, mm-hmm. hang, they hang this guy, and... Uh, um, they bury him in a in a Catholic cemetery. Years later, they dig him up and they move the cemetery because they're going to put some hospital or some building in there. And when they dig the guy up, he still had the noose around his <laughs> neck from when they buried him after the hanging. So, uh, this Mr. Dude was only twenty four. Mr. Jack McCall got his uh, got his just due for sure. Now, do you know the name of the uh, the saloon that he was uh, killed in, Kev? 
Uh, that would be Egan Saloon <laughs> in West, West Orange, Orange New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, no, I don't. Uh, I don't. Sorry. It was uh, Nuttall's Number 10 Saloon. That so sounds Tom, good. Tom Nuttall was the guy. He was a character on Deadwood 2. A real life character, but it was his... Um, yeah, that, that was uh, the place that he was shot at. You can still visit it. It still is a standing place over in Deadwood today. Um, That's cool. But that being said here, um, so while Bill's dead now, all right, Deadwood is starting to get civilized a little bit here slowly but surely they want they're attempting to get uh recognized as a, as a you know no longer a territory they want to be a state now the question is are they going to become part of montana are they going to be a south dakota is there the dakotas what i mean this is wild we take it all for granted right now because that's been settled since we've been born but uh they didn't quite know what was going to go on with all this um now she remains in deadwood so jane's still hanging out over here yeah, we're back to calamity jane oh yeah we, back we, we took a side but you have side to track, it's such yeah, an yeah. important part of the there's story. so many so many characters in interwoven with the calamity jane's life that you have to well uh jane stays in deadwood like you said dad and um she following the you know the death of wild bill her reputation is kind of similar to her reputation she had over at fort laramie she is a uh, wild and devilish but likable People would see her drunk out all the time in the streets. She'd be, you know, just kind of passing out here or there, whatever. And um, she also maintained her friendship with uh, Madame Dufresne Ooh. and uh, even worked for her for a while as a prostitute. Right. Okay. So Yeah, now Madame Dufresne um, noted herself or, uh, that she was only hiring good-looking prostitutes and the girls had to be clean, yes. <laughs> whatever that might be. Hmm. But, yeah, what, uh, what, what did that mean back then? <laughs> <laughs> In hard times, yeah. in hard times, uh, the uh, bath a week kind of a thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. So, right, <laughs> totally different definition nowadays. Uh, correct. Right, um, okay. No, no, it's just, yeah. you're you're right. <laughs> uh, but uh, Jane has an interesting couple of highlights uh, with her time in town here, Dad. She uh, saves a stagecoach that's being attacked by Indians. She winds up saving the lives of almost everyone on board, except unfortunately that while she's diverting these Plains Indians that are attacking the stagecoach. The uh, Native Americans are able to kill the driver, and uh, so because he's dead now, the guy's dead in the the, the stage driver coach. of the stage is dead. So now uh, Calamity Jane is going to throw herself from her horse onto the stagecoach, okay, heroically, then take the reins nice. and bravely drive the stagecoach back into town, saving everyone on board. Um, now, did she actually do that, or is that? Well, like... hang on. No, it says that there was a source here. Oh, oh, shit, it was her too. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it really like again, like one of her uh, apparent? This happened, or like? Uh, well, that again, or is that this one's not up for, known? It's up for debate. It could be because now here's the thing: there could be ten percent truth to every lie that she tells. I'm yeah, she like, might have driven a stage at one time into yeah. town, and everybody was saved on board. But yeah. whether or she was fighting off Indians, some Native again. Americans might have seen her and then said, "Oh, there's people here. Let's get out of here." See, kind right. of a thing. see, like I'm so intrigued, and this might be a question to tie the bow on the whole episode, but like. On a scale of one to ten, where do you think she was in the bullshit meter? <laughs> oh, buddy, no one knows. Like, we're, like in your personal opinion, KP. It's um, and then I'll the the fact that she's able to because uh, there's a couple other weird okay. things here too. Yeah, th that's, this might be a question to tie the yeah. Well, let's, on. let's get okay. to the, let's yeah. get to the end and, and then we'll ask that. that question because there's that's a good question. There's more things that are gonna pin the bullshit <laughs> meter. <laughs> we're uh, we're wrapping up here, Cahoons. Oh um, no, ignore this. I'm uh, literally. Like, it's funny because Kahuna's like, uh, he goes, guys, relax. So don't pay any attention to the sign I'm waving towards you. <laughs> the sign says, wrap up, you have five minutes left. <laughs> he goes, it's just a fan. Um, but she's uh, also credited with, uh, and this one has been pretty much confirmed as true. There's this diabolical uh, smallpox outbreak in town that nearly ruins, the, I believe it's back when Deadwood is still a camp. They're not even a town yet. Right. And uh, smallpox still no laughing matter but uh back then that was a death sentence that was that was the aids of its day if you will and um smallpox is just running through town like crazy and jane is well okay let me help take care of some of these people man she was working as a nurse trying to keep these people healthy get them back up on their feet make them comfortable if they were too far gone so she's uh she's got a lot of good in her there's there's a good heart right. here but she's wild and she is a drunkard beyond drunkards so um like uh kev i'm sure it's some of your uh, i know you're the mayor of west orange so you're, right. always, you're bouncing around uh, to the different establishments there's always um 
there's always those guys that uh, you know you know it's time for them to go home when uh, they just Rah! oh yeah <laughs> not even words anymore hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent right no. first of all they come in not saying words it's actually when they start speaking words that's what they do you have it's to like, throw oh. them out <laughs> when they actually start making sense that's when it's time to go <laughs> well that's that's why Kevin's a good bartender he knows when yeah. <laughs> when they make sense it's time to go yes, you gotta go we're advice to live because this isn't like you that's at all <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Well, uh, she also, not for nothing, she has a big heart here, but she also can be kind of cruel at times. So the uh, she helps procure 10 girls in a single trip uh, to Nebraska. She goes to Nebraska and comes back with 10 women, 10 relatively attractive women uh, through nefarious means. Some people say that maybe they were drugged or coerced um, and they were brought into uh, a life of prostitution at the infamous Gem Saloon which burned down in Deadwood, but was rebuilt as a theater, I believe, uh, owned by Deadwood's most notorious resident. Uh, Kahuna, did you ever watch an episode of Deadwood? No, never. I'm telling you, one of my favorite shows of all time, and the lead character, if you will, the guy who is the scene-stealing son of a bitch in the entire thing, is Ian McShane as Al Swearingen, who's a real-life character. Uh, okay. He was a pimp. He was kind of running the town. He was the boss of the camp, if you will. And Jane, you had me at pimp. That's a <laughs> <laughs> he. Uh, well, Jane worked for him as a dancing girl at the Gem Saloon, and uh, that was one of his first dancers. And she, so again, uh, you know, depending on what view you have of Calamity Jane, uh, if you want to, you know, paint her as heroic or anything like that, or a kind soul, she's also showing up in human trafficking ten women to come now work as prostitutes far away from Nebraska where they were. I'm surprised it wasn't a story like, I saved them from a stagecoach and, a- <laughs> and they devoted their lives to me. It's yeah. a- well, that was the passengers on the stagecoach <laughs> that she drove them into town. Yeah, you, dude, that really would be, oh man, that's a Pandora's box. Um, but yeah, so uh, Jane was again rough looking, but because of the slim picking, she was able to work as a prostitute again here and there if she needed to. Total booze hound. Kev, what's your best drunk story? Uh, I don't remember. Well played. <laughs> there you go. Kev was present for one of my worst moments, Dad. Kev was uh, Kev was in the VIP section with me at uh, a certain 80s nightclub in Atlantic City, New Jersey, right. where I tore my ACL on the uh, the VIP section. And oh, had, Wildwood. And had to be wheelchaired out. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a story for a little. Later. Oh, don't worry. But uh, when I, I tell uh, it on stage, so we'll get. You haven't you. told that on the show yet. No. Well, I don't, I'm not going to do my material. On oh, the show. God, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but uh, we'll get Cahoons out to uh, one of my upcoming gigs. But um, Jane's a total booze hound. She, there's two main stories about her legendary alcoholism. Um, Dad, not for nothing. Uh, you, you ever? You know, sometimes you lose track of time. Well, there there has been some times where God was my co-pilot and <laughs> he took the wheel. <laughs> Same, Larry. Same. Same. <laughs> well, Jane oh. once uh, Jane was once so blackout drunk on a horse and buggy trip that she took, with the intent to go, I believe, uh, uh, um, an hour and a half ride. She was going to go on. Mm-hmm. Uh, she wound up missing her exit, if you will. <laughs> You're right. And uh, and going seventy miles in the wrong direction. In a, a rented horse and buggy. On a horse and buggy, <laughs> right. Ming Chen in the building, guys. So, uh, new location, by the way, for our shared universe studios. You guys, how long is the Asbury one staying open for? Uh, right now, tentatively, uh, to the end of February. Um, they're hinting March is a possibility, which would be cool. Because it's going to get um, warm in March. Foot traffic, awesome. baby. Foot traffic. And, and beyond that, who knows? So, We want to do one in there. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's that, do it. Why not? We'll figure Why not? it out. Hell yeah, man. So, Ming Chen, the boss doesn't come in all the time, Dude, guys. That's exciting. I, I walked into the other studio to tap up, to tap us off on these beers, these Ross Brewing Company <laughs> beers, and he was there. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself right now. Like, Are you short round? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> no. I shook his hand and said, nice to meet you. I'm with the American Loser. Oh, <laughs> and good, I'm here. No, He's like, help yourself. Dude, they've been so great yeah. to us, man. I, I love it. It's a, again, it's a ride to come to the studio. I just, wasn't, ex- I just wasn't expecting to see him. That's how it no, it's, it's, uh, threw me for a loop. That's uh, It's exciting, man. We'll get you in another episode, too, when him and Michael come in and hang out and guest. But uh, here's the, that's the first legendary story. 70 miles in the wrong direction. Oops. Okay. Completely screwed that one up. And that's not... We may have traveled 70 miles coming here today, all right? And that was in a car, and that still took an hour and a half. Right. 
Uh, imagine doing that on a horse and buggy. <laughs> bet yep. she was that's asleep like, the that, whole that's sleeping thing. it off, waking that's a up. That's blackout and the horse knew the way. Yeah, that's <laughs> it just kept going. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of surprised the horse kept going. That's 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 what horses do. Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> and um, here's the other wildest one. This one is half hilarious, half heartbreaking. Oh, um, no. She arrives back in Deadwood uh, with one of her two daughters, okay? Now, neither child's father is known. One was put up for adoption immediately, and Dad, you know how bad of a situation that is. You know, it should be Been lemon there. laws on adoption, if you ask Been me. There. That's a... <laughs> Uh, Ask the man who owns one. Exactly. Two. Um, one was put up for adoption immediately. The other one arrived back in Deadwood with Jane. Jane arrives in town, says, hey, this is my daughter. And she goes, I want us to do, a, can we do a benefit show at the theater here uh, in order to raise some money for my daughter? I want to make sure that she's getting educated at this one Catholic school, but it's over in Sturgis. I don't have the money. Guys, I've always been a good person here in town. I'm, you know, the unofficial mayor, if you will. Helped out with the smallpox outbreak. Yeah, and... saved you from the wagons. I blew half of you. Um, <laughs> <That's it's... right. laughs> so uh, Calamity Jane goes ahead and uh, they start doing this benefit show for her. And it's at a local theater, raises a ton of money, all right? And they pay her back. And they're like, wow, your daughter's going to get to go to this Catholic boarding school in uh, Sturgis. Until... Jane spends the majority of the money she made for the benefit getting loaded in the saloon that Aww. night. That night, right. Oh, yeah. She, she drank the she drank the benefit. Yeah, drink, uh, what was it called? Drinking your paycheck? Yeah, pretty much. It. Yeah, she was doing that. Um, now, uh, you want to talk about drunken mistakes. Uh, Jane marries a man named Clinton Burke. You don't marry a Burke unless a you're Burke. making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. That can't go right. Have you guys done the Ancestry.com to make sure that you're... <laughs> Well, um, it, it's always interesting, too, because Clinton Burke is from... Now, Burke as a last name is like Smith in Ireland. That's what we found out. Right. My um, dad's famous line was, there's there's two different kinds of Burks. There's royalty Burks, and then there's sheep stealers. And you got to figure out which one you're dealing with uh, right uh, now. I, uh, <laughs> the truth Burks. I kind of wonder what... Uh, <laughs> the truth... <laughs> he had to sneak it in there. <laughs> well, this uh, Clinton Burke was from Texas. And then uh, the two of them get married, and they wind up spending some time out in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, they also owned a small ranch over in Montana uh, on the Yellowstone River, of all places. But uh, her fame is still the subject of uh, these newspaper magazines and these dime store novels, which makes her a star attraction as a storyteller. Now, she's already hanging out with wild Bill Hickok. You think there's another... Is there another Bill about to come into her life, Kahuna? I see you found it on Wikipedia. There's a certain Bill named Buffalo Bill. Now, I believe Buffalo Bill said, uh, would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, horses. I hate you because that's going to be stuck in my head for the car ride home. Wrong uh. Buffalo Bill. This is Buffalo Bill Cody, who has a Wild West show. And, Kev, this really is almost like... Um, there's vaudeville popping off at the time. There's these uh, this traveling western show. These are all things that get borrowed into what winds up becoming professional wrestling. Hundred percent. So yeah. you had a little bit of carnival flair to right. it, and that's that's the recipe, brother. You got the circuses. You got the Wild West shows. Mm -hmm. You've got you know the P.T. Barnum aspect of it, this whole thing, and a lot of these uh, famous western. Um, personalities are now trying to make a buck off of uh, what happened uh, 30 years ago. Very true. Now, um, she's during these you know Wild West shows. She's a storyteller. She's just going out there and she's telling her own bullshit. That's great. She's doing material. Right. You know what I mean? She's a, she's a comic. But she also also has her, her dime, uh, not what they call dime novels. In other words, these little pamphlet mm -hmm. uh, soft cover um, pamphlets that she was selling at the same time so she's trying to make a make a buck off of it's her called own merch. Life. Yeah, she's merch. Selling merch she's selling merch <laughs> she, she had the merch table at the that's end that's right <laughs> absolutely yeah thirty dollars for a t-shirt uh thirty yeah, right. for a uh, flat brimmed hat uh, <laughs> 25 for a combo that's it <laughs> uh but she's depressed she's drinking as bad as she's ever been drinking at this point now jane returns to the black hills in 1903 and continues working for her friend Madame Dufresne, though no longer as a working girl anymore. She's yeah, she old. was also in the uh, the uh, Pan American Pan American games, yeah. uh, not games, but the Pan American uh, exhibition. She played short stuff from in Dodgers. Buffalo, but uh, which was a, a major league thing. But uh, she's really at the at the end of the trail here too, with her drinking and everything show. else. And she's actually fired from that because uh, 
you know, she's not showing up or just she's she's a drunk. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought she got fired because they didn't have a blowing competition. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, another bit I can't do on this show. Um, but uh, <laughs> only Kev would appreciate that. Uh, you, you too, Dad. You've seen it before. Kahuna doesn't come out to my shows because he doesn't support me. He only hangs out with me when I pay him to. Um, um, <laughs> Um, I'm a big fan of the Kahuna, by the way. Oh, he's great. Yeah. Everybody, it, you, people fall in love instantly when they're here on the show, man. It's, um, but uh, like we said, she returns to the Black Hills. Her drinking has reached another level, and she becomes seriously ill on a train ride to Seri- uh, Terry, South Dakota. Now, um, the train arrives in Terry, and the conductor literally carries her almost unconscious body off there. The bartender uh, at the, the bar that they bring her into gets her a hotel room, Okay. And uh, she dies on August 1st, 1903, at age 51, of inflammation of the bowels and pneumonia. Yeah, there again, that's really not concrete evidence as to what exactly did she die from. Because there's Tough a to do of autopsies. Yeah. Tough to, yeah, tough to do autopsies. And what they were calling for back then and what we're calling it today or what exactly it really was, who knows. But, yeah, inflammation of the bowels and pneumonia probably a pretty good start with uh, – you know, chronic drinking problems from a lifetime of uh, boozing. Well, there's a uh, a line that I heard once used to describe uh, when uh, a famous person passed away. I can't remember which one it was, but a, a chronic substance abuse problem. And they said, uh, oh, so-and-so died. And, uh, you know, somebody just goes, well, they actually it was Uncle Paulie that said, he goes, well, they spent enough time working on it. So. <laughs> right, right. But, um, yeah, Jane's now dead, age 51. Uh, and her she's taken back to Deadwood. And her funeral is this morbid curiosity. So there's people that like her and remember. And then there's Deadwood's getting civilized at this point. It's a real town again. So uh, the morbid curiosity floods the churches, okay, the, the church that her funeral is at. And there's people marching down to bury her in Boot Hill. Now, what's Boot Hill? Just in 10 seconds or less, Dad. Uh, Boot Hill is the uh, pauper's grave, if you will. Um, that's the okay. city cemetery. That's why where... it's a status symbol to own your plot. Right, you know? right. Otherwise, right. you're getting, we're going to throw you in the dirt. Right. Um, but uh, she gets buried. Um, they take her down towards Boot Hill, but her request from the, uh, the Black Hill Pioneer Society, who understood her contributions to the town, they honored her request to be buried next to Wild Bill Hickok, like we said. And the two of them are buried next to each other in Deadwood, South Dakota. I thought you, earlier in the show you said that his, uh, his friends decided to play a posthumous joke on him by burying her next that, to him. That depends on who you talk to, yeah. Yeah, I thought you were making that up. Nope. And apparently that turns out to be true. Uh, 100%. True. So I'm reading this. I, like, I follow, whenever we do the show, I always follow along on Wikipedia to kind of stay on track. But I, d- I didn't expect to see that, so I'm like, oh, no. He was telling the truth. Yep, they uh, just a mess with her. I right. hope my friends play jokes like that on me when I'm gone. Here's the, the, the example I'm going to try to use, and I, I hope this pop culture reference will hold up. Oops. Remember Wayne's girlfriend from Wayne's World? Yes. Yes. Imagine if, as a joke, they buried her next to Wayne. Oh, my Wayne. God. <laughs> I don't even own a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, I realize why I've been so moody lately. I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, but oh she's dead now. She's buried next to what she had alluded to being the love of her life. Kahuna just pulled up a picture of her uh, next to the grave there, or while Bill was buried first. <laughs> Joke's on you, lady. You're there in a few years. That's a, <laughs> a rare photo of Jane wearing a dress, too. Um, mm-hmm. And but, smiling. Yeah, and a lot of that, I, I found some references to that there's most of the pictures of her, she's in men's clothing, but... Um, it was whether that was like a publicity type of a thing, or whether she was uh-huh. truly uh, wearing wearing dresses on her own accord is uh, as another side of that whole. Are you mystery. telling me that we can't really tell what was real and what was fake with this lady? Well, right from the get go, yeah. There are two things I notice about this photo too that's kind of bugging me out. One, uh, well, she's going to end up there in a few years anyway. So, and then two. You, from what everything we've talked about with Calamity Jane is that like she's her own publicist like she's she's nuts when it comes to that stuff like she'll make up the stories and embellish 
wasn't it a huge deal to take pictures back in the day? So behind this photo is just like a huge setup of like. That's a good point. That's a great point. Yeah. And the fact that she's posing and too. she's posing yeah. and smiling, which I don't yeah. think I've ever seen in like an old photo. Which you have to stand still very, very long and you would have like for the, these photos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but by this time though, by the nineteen it's up. by nineteen oh oh one oh two or whenever this was taken, eighteen ninety, she, she died in nineteen oh three. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's not like Civil War time where they're no, actually having a headrest for you to yeah. uh, to not move. Your while you're ta- while industrial the revolution has taken place. Right. Everything right. you're good to go there. Yeah, that's yeah. a point. S- smarter than us, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'll tell you what. Uh, she's dead now. She's buried next to you know her boyfriend. And uh, but what's interesting is that she's such a good bullshit artist that the stories about her are still getting printed. Magazines are running art. Magazines are starting to come out around this time. The dime store museums now have dime store novels, like you were saying too, Dad. That she is a regular feature in. Because what a what writer wouldn't love a premise like that? Oh, the lady cowboy. Yeah, and and the uh, the dime novels were just generating one after the other. They would take the same story and slap a different color. Color was a big thing to put the uh, at least the cover of these dime novels in a, in a color mm-hmm. to, to draw attention to it. Um, or they would just change the cover on the same old story and re-release it over and over and over again, and they're still making money on this whole thing. But, you know, people are eating this stuff up, so it's, uh, it's the, uh, the, shop, the shopper uh, rags that you see at the checkout counter that, uh, you know, that, that's really what it was. It's for the common person, the, the lowbrow uh, Again, reader. Again, lowbrow, the, the working lowbrow class reader. people. Well, yeah. what, what's the next thing that's about to come? you got the radio that's about to pop up. She's going to have uh, the serials on radio, of which she was a regular on. Um, and then there's the, uh, the other new exciting invention, television and the talkies. All right? So got a lot of stuff coming on over here. Jane has been played. She's got like she becomes a mainstay for TV and movie westerns. That's how I heard about her. Was she was always mentioned because I like. Yeah, westerns I mean, even after her death, her oh, yeah. her legend just grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Like Kev said, she sounds like a pro wrestler. Right. That's the, you're not gonna hang on. What did you say your name was? Again? My name is Captain Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> huh? Why are you driving the Uber? Um, but uh, Jane becomes a mainstay on the TV and movie westerns, uh, and most of these decide that they're going to follow a less accurate and more kind of a mythical or mystical presentation of Calamity Jane. So some of the actresses that have portrayed Calamity Jane would include Catherine O'Hara, Kevin McAllister's mom from Home Alone, all right, uh, Ellen Barkin, a very attractive woman, uh, Jane Alexander, a very attractive woman, Angelica Houston, no comment. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jane Russell, um, who was, who was uh, certainly a hottie smoke for her shot. Oh, she was gorgeous. Yeah. She was she was the brunette Monroe that they would cast the right. two of them together. Absolutely. I think sometimes if you wanted to have, do blondes really have more fun? I have a theory on that. Um, and then uh, Jean Arthur, uh, as Kahuna pointed out, Yvonne DiCarlo of the Munsters would yeah. portray her. Uh, another person that would uh, portray her would be Francis Farmer, okay, who will be an episode of this show. I, her story is so fascinating. Uh, Coons, are you a Nirvana fan? Mm. Okay. Mm. Kev? A little bit, see? All right, there's a Nirvana song called uh, Francis Farmer Will Have Her Revenge. And uh, she was um, a beautiful young starlet who then got uh, uh, forcefully taken to a psychiatric facility and had a forced lobotomy done on her. Ooh. Yeah, it's it's pretty wild stuff, but uh, and then most famously, obviously, uh, she was played by Robin Weigert on the HBO classic show Deadwood. Now, Deadwood gave her the most accurate portrayal. It wasn't historically accurate, but they did play her up. Now, this is where the contrast comes in. I left the one name out that I know you're waiting for, Dad. Hmm. I know you're waiting. Um, the one name I left out here is because so Robin Weigert's uh, Calamity Jane on Deadwood is accurate. She's gruff. She's wearing the men's clothes. She's a drunk. She's farting and burping in people's faces. Sexy. She's covered in dirt. She curses her like she curses poetically right, on that right, show. Right. It is. Oh, so she is from New Jersey. Well, there, Make a <laughs> <laughs> there's one episode of uh, Deadwood where her only line of dialogue is that uh, she's passed out on her horse on the outskirts of town that she went to get a drunk on or whatever. And uh, she's passed out on the horse, and someone rides past her, and she just pops up and just goes, cocksucker. <laughs> and that's her entire line for the entire episode. It's, it was just so good. But 
she gives us like kind of a more uh, true to spirit version of uh, uh, Calamity Jane here. Now, if you want to take that in a hundred and as far removed from a rough looking chick here, Dad, is there a certain blonde, gorgeous, just dime piece it was the the heart throb of the 50s yeah and, and and later into the 60s yeah to me personally i think the the uh, pinnacle of absurdity for um, female characters to play calamity jane's role would be uh, in a 1953 musical <laughs> with doris day <laughs> i mean this chirpy little blonde uh, is now playing this uh hellbent for leather, uh, you know, Calamity Jane character that Doris Day, really? You're going to put Doris Day as a Calamity Jane? I don't think so. It's a, well, not for nothing. If Doris Day was blowing guys at an army base. <laughs> there I, would be a line I, three I miles. I would have heard about it. So, but, yeah, Cahoon's pulling up the photos. here. It, it's literally, it's almost like... Um, like a fantasy for a guy, you know, where it's just a, a beautiful woman is this like tough frontiers woman kind of a thing. And uh, Kuhn is going back and forth between the Doris Day photo of her and like the buckskin looking like Davy Crockett. I'm going I'm I'm to have an epileptic seizure right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you got to feel like, like th- that that depiction of Calamity Jane has just got to be to sell, I guess, tickets. Oh, totally. For why sure, why right? wouldn't it sell? Yeah. She, uh, Doris Day was one of the biggest stars of her day. 100%. And you got a great story that hasn't been told yet in a motion picture. So you're gonna go with it. And again, they so, made it a musical too. Yeah, so right, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> so I killed some minjin, suck some dick, do da. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think and people. And I woke up on my horse and screamed, cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> people suspended their, dis- their disbelief for that one, probably. Oh yeah, I mean, my, I'll tell you what, right now, if you wanted to make a fantasy movie for me involving Calamity Jane, and I was Bill Hickok, uh, I would want to be Bill Hickok, and my Calamity Jane would be none other than Carrie Underwood. That's where I'm going, guys. All right. Every the night. country singer? Oh, yeah. Sunday Tony Night Football. Ro- Tony Romo's ex? Tony Romo's ex. Why would you ruin that? Why are you doing this? To me, I'm trying to... Uh, listen, I talk things out to remember who people are. So I had no idea who Carrie Underwood was, so I started talking. Well, no, no worries on that one, dude. Hey, uh, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, we're getting ready to wrap up your LP. Do you have anything else you want to throw in real quick? No, I think that's uh, pretty much covered. We hammered uh, that one. We're going to be right at our 90-minute mark, which means we only went over by a half hour, guys. <laughs> right. um, I know who I'd cast as Calamity Jane. That's what I want to throw. I'm excited. Right back. We haven't been doing it as diligently as we should, but this is a regular segment on the show from here on out. Cahoon is casting couch. Who you got, buddy? <laughs> All right. So I'm not going for the, the, the door stay approach, which is just take someone beautiful and insert them into a legend. Well, not to say. She might be beautiful to some. If you say Caitlyn Jenner, I'm off this podcast. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to go Melissa McCarthy. Inter- oh, dude. Yeah, you made a comedy with... Yeah. If you made a comedy with Melissa McCarthy as Calamity Jane... Uh, I would watch that in a heartbeat. I think that would be a funny movie. I think that would be great. Who would yeah. you Who would you cast in this comedy as Wild Bill Hickok? That's a good a Bill Hader. Oh my God! Because the man can't do anything wrong. He's our He's our second coming of Bill Murray. There's nothing they're bad in. <laughs> yeah, I'm about it. So let's let's uh, let's let's talk after this. Let's get this made. I, I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm into it. LP, you did some great research on this one, man. Thank you so much for breaking down the Jack McCall thing, explaining Wild Bill. Uh, and we didn't burn, and we, we gave enough info without burning future episodes here. So if, you got, if this episode does well, we'll look into doing a couple others. Um, that being said, Kev, Royal Rumble predictions. Talk to me. All right. So you got two Royal Rumble matches, right? <laughs> Female Royal Rumble? Are you really asking for this? No, uh, well, I, no, no, we, no, no, we don't have to do this. We don't have to yeah. do this here. Let's no, wrap Buster, it up. But you have a great podcast, man, that I enjoy. I like being a guest on it. I also listen to it. So Plug that. that shit. So why don't you tell the listeners where they can, if you guys like professional, even if you're not a, a current fan of the product and you just like the old school days, these guys talk about both yeah. enough that it's enjoyable. We, we talk about everything um, from like the 80s, the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s to today. We've had guests like Mick Foley, AJ Styles, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho. Um, All right, you don't need to show off. I'm just trying to throw these people. I'm very I, jealous of Jericho. I, I don't. Lie. I don't necessarily know if this audience translates to wrestling, so I just want to throw that no, out it's there. It's definitely a shared so, universe. That's a good point, my <laughs> man. Pots and pans. But uh, uh, shinywizards.com. 
shiningwizards.com. Uh, just check us out, man. We hope. Uh, listen, thank you guys so much, and this was great. Kahuna, thank you, everyone here. Thank you. No problem. Thank also, you. just for a disclaimer, it's shiningwizards.com, not grandwizards.com. Not grandwizards.com. <laughs> It'll take you to a very yeah. different nope, website. Nope, or Imperial nope. Wizards. And, yeah. They can find you on Twitter and Instagram, correct? Yeah, uh, Wizards Podcast on Twitter, at Wizards Podcast on Instagram. And uh, where can they follow you, friend? At Kevin Garifo on Twitter. It's silly. I don't know how to change it. Uh, <laughs> at uh, at Shining Wizards Kevin on uh, Instagram. So very cool, man. Appreciate it very much, man. No, buddy, you're one of my All great right. friends in this world. So it was a very honored to have you come on the show finally. So thank you for that. It was great. Um, I hope I uh, hope I did well. Well, you're so. coming back. I hate to tell you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you're in uh, trouble again. Thank you to uh, our sponsor over at Ross Brewing, uh, Navasink IPA, Dad. If you're signing good off, stuff. Good you stuff. You like the West Coast good IPAs. Stuff. I'm on my sixth is. cup. That's it. <laughs> we weren't counting. I never finished my first cup, so any time Kevin got up, I would hand him a half a beer to have him fill it back up. So I lost track too. Don't Lord, worry. let Calamity Jane take the wheel. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now we're uh, we're gonna get the hell out of here. Hopefully, man. we won't be seventy miles beyond our exit on the way home. Oh God! Any traffic, we're gonna have to get out of the car and ah. pee in Ziploc bags. Should oh my God! Up. That scene alone with Melissa McCarthy and J- and Bill Hader would just be worth it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna write this now and hope to I'm God. Okay with you doing it, buddy. <laughs> All I'm going to make for, it like Blazing Saddles. I just want a special Rebel thanks. Funny. Special thanks is all I ask for. I got you. I and, got you. And a walk-on roll. That's a, or just you know, Carrie Underwood's phone number. Whatever you come <laughs> up with first. <laughs> I got it. you. But, oh, she'll play... Uh, she could play... Uh, the Madam. Yeah, Do- uh, Dora? Dufresne. Dufresne. Dufresne, Dufresne, yeah. So, not bad on that one, man. So, I think we're sitting on a couple of gold mines here. But that being said, guys, Mike and Ming, thank you so much for taking care of us here. Uh, Shared Universe Studio, you guys make this happen. You really do. It's fantastic. If you guys like the show, it's America Loser Podcast on Instagram. Uh, and if you really like us, uh, the, the best way to help us out, we're giving you all this shit for free. All right? My father's retired. I make him write a research paper once a week. <laughs> really? Absolutely. He's getting ready to go down to Florida, spend a little time with, uh, you know, he and my mother like to go down there and spend their winters. Uh, well earned, too. All right? But South Beach Larry is returning. <laughs> which is great for him. However, we're not going to have LP on for a couple of weeks here. So, guys, what I ask of you is if you like the show, uh, again, it's all for free. Just leave us a written review over on iTunes. It helps us out a lot. It helps build us up in the rankings. We're trying to do that. I don't want to charge for the show, okay? Uh, but it does cost me money to do this every week. And if you guys like it, that's all I'm asking for right now. So do me a favor. And uh, if you feel like checking me out on uh, Instagram or Twitter, at KP Burke sucks. Um, we had a listener in South Africa. I thought he was a really nice guy, and then he unfollowed me. So um, <laughs> we we'll have to do what we do there. And we're finally getting listeners in Ireland, Dad. So the All home right. country's finally proud of you. All right. Okay, and uh, which is ironic because the Burks were asked to leave Ireland. So. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much. This was a great episode. Cahoons, thanks for everything you do, brother. And guys, that was Calamity Jane, American Loser. An American Loser the day I was born. An American Loser the day I was born. An American Loser the day I was born.